So you have some random electronics on your hand and some of them even have nice sensors on them. You want to reverse engineer it and use it on your own exciting new projects and don't know where to start? In this video, I will show you how I do it and you can also do the same thing with your own PCBs. PCBs or printed circuit boards often have sensors built into them. These sensors can be used to measure temperature, motion, light and variety of other parameters depending on the application. For example, this PCB is from a thermostat and it got a temperature sensor built right into it. Or it might be an electronic watch and it might have motion sensors on them. We can take advantage of these sensors by programming the microcontrollers on them to do something useful. I have seen various tutorials on the internet where people were describing how to use the sensors on the PCBs. And they usually show you how to control the sensors using another Arduino board like ESP32 or any Arduino boards. But I think it's unnecessary and wasteful. Because most of the time, these boards already have microcontrollers on them and you don't need another microcontroller to control the sensors. You can just upload your code directly to the chips and program it and do whatever you want to do with them. And the PCB designer specifically picked up this microcontroller because they thought that microcontroller is suitable for this application. You can also take advantage of their design choices by uploading your own code directly onto them. They already proved that their choices are working on their intended applications. And you don't need a separate microcontroller to run them. Within these PCBs, I found this one interesting. I salvaged this one one of the agricultural temperature data loggers. It is a low power device and it promises 90 day working time. Since it's a disposable device, I thought we can give it a second life by uploading our own codes. It already has a microcontroller on it and also on the device we have a temperature sensor, also a memory chip and it is capable of communicating via Bluetooth. So my plan is to write my own code and upload it to the device and integrate it to my home assistant server for my home automation. I will try to describe things as generic as possible because I don't think that you can find the exact device that I am holding right now. And I think you can use the same methods that I am using to any other device. If you follow a method like the one that I am going to share with you right now, you can achieve the results that you are aiming for in relatively short time. Because the PCB is already there and you know that the PCB was working fine. All the design verification steps has been completed. So majority of the work has been already done by the manufacturer of this product. And enough talk, let's get started already. I am using an Arduino Uno to upload code to this microcontroller here. Currently it is running the Blink sketch. And this is the first sketch that you should be uploading to see if everything is working correctly or not. I removed the battery of course because the battery was already depleted. Also I have put a cover here because the connectors were touching each other and making it short. So don't mind that other than that it doesn't have any purpose. If you don't know how to upload the code to your target microcontroller, that's the first step that you should investigate. In the previous video, I showed how to upload your own codes to any microcontroller and if you don't know how to do that, you can watch it clicking right here. I will also put a link down in the description as well. Each microcontroller manufacturer provides data sheets for the products and also they provide software examples. For example, I showed the Blink sketch from this peripheral software examples and in this one i would like to focus on the bluetooth examples and i think for most of us it is the most interesting part and if you have another microcontroller from another brand you should check their websites and you can find similar examples in their websites currently i am in the examples folder and you would see a bunch of examples bluetooth examples to be used in this microcontroller in the documentation, they recommend checking the simple BLE purple example first and start your development project from this. If you look at these examples, it's pretty basic, but it exposes the microcontroller to Bluetooth. And indeed, I think it is a good starting point because hardest part, which is implementing the Bluetooth, has been already showed in this example. And here is my first tip. If you are going to work on a project for a while, I really recommend you to write a batch file and they are pretty easy to make. 
they are actually just text files and all you need to do is mentioning the program names and also the parameters for example for this one hex to bin program takes file name as a parameter and it converts the hex files to binary files cc loader needs the binary files and it takes cc loader you need to mention the program name and the parameter 5 is the com port and this is the generated file and 0 is depend on the firmware upload method that you picked up and after that I just delete the binary file so highly recommended after you write your batch file all you need to do is double clicking on it and it will do all the steps just with one click and it will upload your code to your target microcontroller without any hassle after uploading the code we should be able to see the presence of the microcontroller in the bluetooth I installed NRF Connect for my Android phone and I can see the device, it's named Bluetooth Peripheral and I can see the messages that it sends to the Bluetooth. This software example implements a very simple Bluetooth Peripheral device with services including configurations and it can be used as a starting point for developing your application. So we are in a good start. What we need to do next is writing a driver for the sensor that we have on the PCB and sending the data to the Bluetooth. For that, we should look other examples as well and try to find something really similar to the R project. The temperature sensor on the device is SI7050 and it uses I2C protocol. Within the examples folder, I saw that they have a project called SensorTag and it is one of the reference designs that Texas Instrument provides and it has bunch of sensors on it and you can also find the schematics of course also code is available as well and I think we are on the correct route if you upload that code to microcontroller you won't be able to see much but at least I think it can give us some ideas about Bluetooth implementation I uploaded the firmware on the device. Since we don't have any of the sensors which was on the sensor tech device, we should expect all of the sensor readings to be zero. And NRF Connect can easily find the device on the Bluetooth and we can see the advertised data. We are not seeing any of the sensor readings of course, but at least we are seeing relevant profile. And also it is a decent start for us as well. I hope to find a driver implementation which uses I2C in this example. And if the microcontroller have Bluetooth, usually manufacturers provide mobile examples as well for Android and iOS. You can use these examples for testing or developing your own mobile applications. If we connect the device using their sample mobile application, we can see all the Bluetooth profiles of course. Here all the sensor values are zero, but it is to be expected. I do not plan to make an Android or iOS application, but if you are planning to do it, it is there. And inside of this example, I was able to find the driver for the humidity sensor. It is for SHT21 humidity sensor from Sensiron. And I think it should be a nice start for us for writing our own drivers. And Actually, what I am interested in here is the I2C implementation and how they are sending the comments. Um, well, we can see it right here. They are more or less the same as the ones on the Arduino, only the names are different. And within the examples, I think the best example which suits our project is the thermometer example. And this example is for Bluetooth thermometer application. It is actually more or less what we are looking for, but it doesn't really read the temperature or anything. It just shows a simulated data. Actually, after this point, all we need to do is replace the variable which is responsible for advertising the data over Bluetooth. And here it is. All we need to do is writing our own driver and pushing the data to thermometer Celsius variable. I am uploading the data just to make sure and see how it behaves over Bluetooth. This is what I see after uploading the code to microcontroller. This time name of the device is thermometer sensor and I am seeing the simulated data. 
For example, it's showing 37 degrees Celsius and it is not that hot here. When you are reverse engineering, it is okay to make some assumptions, but you should always verify them. For example, I made an assumption that the temperature sensor works and functional and also it has a configurable address. One of them is 40 and other one is 70 and I assumed that it will be 40 and also I didn't have any logic analyzers or something and the device was not really functional from the beginning already so I didn't have a chance to listen to the communication and figure out what's going on and also I assumed that it is using regular I square C pins on the microcontroller and it is not triggered by any of the pins that the microcontroller has so lots of assumptions and you need to verify them luckily i was able to find these pins and i will try to upload the code to arduino board using the h squared c pins i will try to read the temperature data from the sensor the pcb was already connected to arduino board and all I have to do is connecting the I2C ports of the Arduino Uno to my target port. Since those pins were exposed, it was fairly easy to attach a cable and see if I2C port is working. And if all my assumptions are correct, I should be able to get a reading from the temperature sensor. Luckily, it is quite easy to find a library file for Arduino boards and you can actually just download the libraries and install their example sketch right away. And you can actually read the temperature levels. So it proves that all of our assumptions are correct and we can move on. And what I would do is I will just copy and paste the driver for the humidity sensor and of course C file and header file as well. And I would rename them with the name of the sensor. And our draft drivers are ready. After this, I will take a closer look at that driver and see what's going on here. First, they included the i squared c driver here and I will leave it there. And I need to rename this with your own header name. And Probably we just need to delete entire file and rewrite everything, but it shouldn't be that hard. In the past, I was again following the same ways that I described here, but nowadays we have new tools and I wanted to try something new because I know that not everyone is very good with the C. We have really nice tools to overcome this step. Of course, I am talking about ChatGPT, but there are some caveats. For example, if you just type ChatGPT to write you a function for CC2541, you would get, of course, a reply, but it will not work for your device. For example, we don't have E2C.H available on the examples, and also, we don't have these functions. So if you try to compile it, it won't work. And also we don't have, for example, delay ms function. But I found a really nice trick to let ChatGPT to write a function for us. So I opened the I2C library header file and it gives us the global functions that we can use to access I2C. What I do is I just copied this and paste it on the chat GPT and the results are perfect. Actually, it showed us a really nice implementation for this function. And for example, it didn't even use the previous non-supported functions, only used the available functions for I2C, which is used on the CC2541. It even have conversion functions available, so more or less, we can just copy entire code and paste it to our library. And I pasted out the code and I commented out this include header file because we are not going to use it and we are only going to use the I2C library header. And 
copied the address here as well. I didn't actually touch those definitions. I don't need them. So I will just delete those. I'm trying to spend as little time as possible here. So let's see. I put an initialization function here. We don't really need that, but I put it for test purposes. And this is the exactly the same code which ChatGPT gave us. But one thing here is he provided a sleep function here. But instead of waiting a random amount, I just wanted to see if the buffers are changed after the reading. But rest of the code is pretty much the same. And also we need to mention the new functions in the header file as well. And those two are mentioned here. Let me summarize what I have done. In the driver file, I multiplied the result by 100 because it was easier to pass along the, the temperature data. Also, inside of the thermometer file, I included the driver file here. Also, I am calling the function where temperature data is assigned and I played in a fair place from there and there, but more or less, that's all I have done in this project. I uploaded the code to PCB and I can see it in the NRF Connect as a thermometer sensor and I can connect to it. We can check the current temperature by checking the intermediate temperature. Temperature levels are shown in the hexadecimal order and we can just easily convert them to the decimal numbers. We should read it as 0819. And if we type 0819, we will have 2073 and we multiply the result by 100. So the degree is 20.73 Celsius. And it is more or less the temperature levels in the home. As a last touch, I configured all the ports as GPIO and set them as output and put them on low. And the reason I did is because this device can really work on the low power and I don't want any leak current passing through the GPIO pins. Then I will just use a button cell and put everything back to its own original casing. And it is ready to be used. After all the steps, you can easily use it in your home assistant setup and configure it using standard Bluetooth integration. There are already many tutorials on the internet, but if you want help, just drop a comment down in the description. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and see you next time.